The 10th anniversary of 9-11 is coming up, which is kind of stunning. You were with President Bush on that day. Can you tell us your, your experience? What happened? What went through your mind? Well, we were uh, down in Florida, and he was at the time trying to sell Congress on No Child Left Behind. And so uh, we were going from one school to another, hearing you know basically the same speech about No Child Left Behind. I remember having dinner with some other correspondents um, the uh, night before 9-11, just as the hijackers, as it turned out, were beginning to, to move into place. And we were having a conversation about how this might be the most boring presidential trip in history. Uh, and of course, the next morning, uh, you saw the tragedy that unfolded. We went to a, a school in Sarasota. It was not a, it was a relatively poor um, school. It was a poor neighborhood. Um, the school had been nicely cleaned up, as you can imagine, for a presidential visit. And just as we arrived, we heard the reports of the first plane into, uh, mm. uh, into the tower and thought that was strange given the weather and so forth. And I remember because the president was off in a classroom, I walked across the little courtyard uh, of the school, said hello to a couple of Secret Service agents who were out there having their coffee as we all were. And I went into the network pool room. It was a classroom that just had a lot of network equipment set up so that I could see a video of what was happening in, in New York. And just when I got in there, the second plane hit and we saw this live. And I remember this is the difference between hanging out with journalists and, and uh, uh, and not, and a couple of us looked at each other, and as the fireball was hitting, the first thing we said was bin Laden. And I discovered later on that that was an unusual reaction, but I guess because we covered this stuff, you know, each and every day, uh, it seemed clear to us that this was an Osama bin Laden operation. So what about the Secret Service and, and So the I president? turned around after making a few phone calls, went back through the courtyard, and suddenly all their big armor was out. They knew me because I was part of the White House press corps. They still stopped and checked my ID. I went back into the school. And then President Bush came out and gave that somewhat strange talk where he referred to uh, how they would hunt down the folks who did this. It was a very uh, you know, Texanism kind of line. And it was in many ways, it, I thought it captured just the chaos of the moment, that this was a very unscripted moment for him. And then Air Force One left, they, they took him to Air Force One and got in the air immediately. And for those who were on Air Force One, I wasn't, I had been on it coming in the night before and there's a rotation. And apparently, you know, it went to 40,000 feet right away. People had never seen the plane do that before. Did uh, they know where they were going? At the time, I don't think they did. I think it was when they were in the air, they decided, I think they were initially thinking they would return to Washington. And then you'll remember that he skipped across to several Air Force bases um, out in the middle of the country. Uh, by the afternoon, it was relatively clear that uh, we knew the names of some of the hijackers from the manifest of the plane and had discovered that they had been trained at a flight school in Florida. Well, there were no flights running, and we had a correspondent up in Atlanta, in our Atlanta bureau, and one down in Miami. They were both hundreds of miles away. And we heard about the flight school, and I'm flipping through a little almanac I carry with me, and I looked at this, and I said, you know, that flight school is 20 miles from where the President of the United States slept last night. So since I couldn't get home, I spent the next two days at the flight school with the people who had trained Muhammad Atta. Thank you, David. Thank you.